Now let's take a quick tour of the remaining main sections. The amps or VCAs are to the right of the filters using the same display and you can change the input into each VCA that come from the filter or the insert effect. You can also pick one of three emulations for response, linear, logarithmic, or sigma, kind of an S-curve, or you have a boost control which is like a soft distortion based on an OTA circuit. The uh, VCA level is controlled there and then your initial pan setting in the stereo field. There's only this one page in the VCA main section, so then we can go now to the modulation section. And here we have a, a more limited mod uh, destination source path, where we have a fixed path with source 1 always to the VCA and source 2 always to the panning. That will be expanded upon later. Now we can take a look at the envelope section. Below there you'll see four mute buttons, and these allow us to mute any of the four filter amp uh, signal pass. And above that we'll have the six envelope selections. Number six always going to the overall amp or overall VCA. Each of the timing values for these uh, DADSRs are from one millisecond up to 20 seconds. The second page of the envelope allows us to control the slope of each anywhere from linear to exponential or in between. Kind of a unique aspect of the sustain slope. Sustain doesn't really use a slope, it's an actually a timing value because it acts like a secondary decay. So on the positive side you can have it uh, go from where the decay ends up to the sustain and on the negative side uh, it goes down and these are in time values as well. So it gives you an extra segment uh, envelope that way. On the modulation page for each segment you can modulate it from a more restricted but still useful uh, mod source list and then on the second page of the mod we can change the overall velocity to the envelope and then the individual amounts of the modulation as we selected from the previous page in both positive and negative controls there. Last we can look at the LFO section and uh, there are four LFOs plus a vibrato LFO which is always connected to the mod wheel although you can switch it off or on and set the maximum excursion there with the mod wheel max. Wave shapes are sine, triangle, ramp, which is an upwards saw, and saw, which is a downward saw, square wave, and sample and hold, which gives us our random patterns. You can offset the wave shape so it's unipolar, that is, it goes in a positive direction only. You can synchronize it to MIDI clocks at different rates. And you can have it re-trigger. My uh, re-trigger LED doesn't work there, but uh, when you re-trigger it again, it sets the onset of the wave shape based on the phase setting and every key on event. When you go to the modulation section, you have three sources this time, and the destinations are either rate or level for the LFOs. Similar uh, control and strength as with the oscillator and filter modulation paths. Also in the main section of the LFOs, there's a second page. And on the second page, there's actually a, an envelope on the output level. So delay start, a fade in, and a fade out, and an overall level control. Note that if you do want to use the mod wheel for something other than introducing the vibrato LFO, you have to switch it off here and then go to the second page and reduce the output level to zero.